While the zero down restart is a self descriptive phrase that essentially I identifies the practice of restarting the backend services without affecting the downtime of the entire system so the user doesn't really feel anything however i still wanted to make this video to kind of discuss the intricacies about restarting a backend and first of all how do you achieve a rolling restart or a zero down restart effectively and the second thing is like why do we even need to restart a service and are there any alternatives if possible this is what i'm going to discuss in this show how about we jump into it welcome to the backend engineering show with your host hussein nasser and restoring the service sometimes become uh, inevitable you have to do it for many reasons your service might have become might have stored a corrupted state and the only way around it is to restart the entire service so it starts from a clean state as a result it discards any state that it stores in the ram or in memory so that you start fresh a lot of problems uh, go away simply by restarting your machine or restarting your phone or restarting your computer right and the reason is because the machine the state machine can go into unpredictable way where you end up with a corrupted state or not necessarily corrupted but undesirable undesirable state that could leave you in a performance bottleneck or or a situation that really it's hard to get out of by mirror of the code and it's just easier for you to restart the server you might say can i code my program or the application in a way that it never gets to that state you absolutely can but the problem here is the breadth of situations where you can get into that these nasty states where the service becomes quote-unquote corrupt or quote-unquote undesirable is a lot and sometimes you just don't cannot protect them all or sometimes you just don't have the resources to to build such application that is just self-healing all the time so as a result we need to restart the service to start from fresh Another reason to restart is um, um, outages. We've seen it with many, many outages in Amazon Kinesis outage and the Google authentication outage in the Microsoft outages. They always, in the midst of fixing the outage, they mentioned that hey, we're doing a rolling restart to restart the services one by one. And the reason is especially with stateful applications such as load balancers my saying is, is a load balancer stateful yes especially load layer 7 load balancers it it remembers the back end state it remembers that this back end is unresponsive it remembers that this back end is unhealthy it remembers that there was a networking problem between this and this and as a result some load balancers some back end services store this state that says okay this back end is bad this back end is good this back end is bad and as a result you need to invalidate all that you can eventually code something that hey invalidate everything but what if the service is so busy or the load balancer is so busy servicing so many requests that it just it can't possibly listen to the administrative call to refresh itself so it's very very hard to build something that is so resilient so eventually we need to restart the service right so it can start freshly so that's how that's why we need a restart another reason to restart is to pick up a new code change you just pushed a new thing in in the application and most binary programming languages 
require you to stop the process and restart it or start a brand new process to pick up the new binary that you just changed right because if you push a code change and you compiled it into a binary and you have to run it the old process has to stop right in order to pick the new process and you might say Hussein, i'm gonna step spin up the new process with the new code chain and let the old process keep running until i uh, qu quickly quickly die off as i stop sending requests to that you can definitely do that it's not easy because you have to code this i guess uh, shifting logic right you want to shift the logic to this and uh, you have to restart at the end of the day restart will cause the service to not accept request at that portion of time uh, that we've seen this a lot with load balancers and proxies they try as much as possible to be so careful with applying configuration changes even forget about code change configuration changes right i want to apply a configuration change uh, i have to restart the load balancer and the moment i restart the load balancer I cannot send requests during the restart period. And you might say, Hussein, I can, if, a, if the restart is so fast, I, if I can sacrifice 300 millisecond worth of request or somehow queue them up, then I'm fine. You can, if your availability allows it, then, then you, can, you can do that and keep your application simple. But most load balancers now just can't do that because big companies use these load balancers such as HA proxy and voy and other uh, other proxies as well that have the ability to restart to reload a configuration without actually stopping the service so it does what what i explained basically spinning up an, another process new process load the configuration in that new process and keep the old one running and slowly gracefully shut down that process to do in order to do that all right so many reasons you can do that definitely do that but eventually you're gonna need to restart the service and one more thing that i'm aware of is the ability to change the code not just the configuration change the code without restarting the service while the process is running flush the changes in the running process that is really beautiful and the only programming languages that i'm aware that can do that hot swap code hot swap i believe is erlang and the other one i forgot what it's called i believe it's elixir yes elixir is the other one I, there might be other languages that allow you to do that without the restart so if you wrote your code in these languages then definitely you don't need to restart in these certain situations if you updating code change which is sometimes i seen a lot of companies go with that choice of erlang or elixir just of because of that beautiful feature because i don't want to restart i don't want to deal with rolling restarts i don't want to deal with zero down things right when it comes to code changes but still does that save you from eventual restarts when the state of your application just become corrupt or undesirable you, you just you just want your application to get rid of that state because your application is eventually stateful if your application is stateless and it doesn't really store literally stateless doesn't store anything then you're probably safe right you don't have to restart it so th these are the reasons that we need a restart now let's discuss how do we actually perform a zero down restart without having the user even feeling that the service has been restarted for a reason or another right regardless of why or we're starting it so the simplest way to do this is if you have a load balancer and you have 10 of your services on the back end and let's say you need to restart them to pick up a queue change to, to pick up a configuration change to release them from the bad state they are in whatever the reason is if you restart all of them at once that's a bad idea because the load balancer will say hey all of them are offline users are basically won't be served so one one way to do it is to stop 
one of the services and keep the other running and when it comes back you stop the second one and and then when the third when the second one come back you start you restart the third one and so on you keep going this way and you have to be careful when you restart your services you don't have to do it in the application you have to do it in a smart way so that the load balancer is even aware of that restart because if you restart the application while the load balancer is essentially making a request to it that will cause a downtime because the load balancer does, is not aware that the service is about to go down that's another note that you have to take into consideration so and instead of actually restarting the service one by one you have to actually take it out of the pool of the load balancer backend take it out service one i'm about to restart it let the load balancer to remove it <laughs> and now you can remove that service from the backend and now the load balancer will not send request to that service and you can safely restart it and you can do this one by one and then add the service back onto the load balancer and then do the restart one by one and that's that's one way to do it so however removing a back-end service from the load balancer is actually a configuration change in the load balancer so technically you have to restart you may have to restart the load balancer itself well that's a disaster right because that's even worse that's why most load balancers come with a runtime API a HA proxy uh, this is my favorite uh, proxy HA proxy I just love it it's a very native it's very simple it just does one thing and one thing only I love it proxying and load balancer it doesn't claim to be anything else that's what I love HA proxy okay doesn't mean the other services or, or load balancers are not good I just prefer this personally so there's a runtime API in HA proxy that says, hey, HA proxy, update your state, running state, so that this service is remove it. Remove the service from your from your backend fleet. Remove it altogether. Don't put it there. And as a result, uh, the, the, you don't have to make a configuration change in the physical YAML or or the CFG or the JSON file of the load balancer. You just tell the load balancer, hey, remove this backend service. And once you remove it, the load balancer is smart enough to update all the running processes, its running process that, hey, backend one has been removed. Now, as a result, future requests, you can monitor, go ahead and monitor that. Are, are we really in service one? Are we getting any backend, uh, any requests to this backend? If we are not, then we succeed. Now it's safe to restart it. And then once you restart it and comes back in this fresh state, then you update the load balancer to add it back to the fleet. And then you monitor, is the request, are the requests succeeding, right? Then yes, then you're good. So that is just a taste of what can go wrong and how to perform an actual zero down restart, obviously and uh, yeah back in engineering is not easy i know <laughs> devops it's very difficult to to get this right to actually nail all of that stuff right all right all right guys that is it for me let me know what i miss if you're a devops engineer and you deal with this stuff tell me tell us one of the fantastic story that you run into and uh, i'm gonna see you on the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye